marketing and contract management. In this particular discussion, we are going to be understanding how we need to go about uh, the contracting uh, discussion with our suppliers, what we need to do in order to be able to ensure that our relationship with our suppliers is uh, the best that we could. And uh, we continually continue to engage and have a very fruitful relationship. So uh, by the end of this discussion, uh, we are going to be able to identify uh, the key stages of, of contracting process and the roles and responsibilities of the contracting parties. Uh, you will also be able to apply the principles of contract law and ethics to ensure compliance and avoid any forms of dispute in uh, various relationships, especially between the organization and the suppliers. We'll also be able to analyze uh, the risks and opportunities of different types of contracts and procurement methods. We'll also be able to develop effective uh, contract negotiation and communication skills to achieve desired outcomes and maintain a good relationship. And we'll also be able to monitor and evaluate uh, contract performance and implement uh, very corrective actions when needed. So we begin by understanding uh, what is contracting. And we are saying when we talk about contracting, then it involves the process of signing a legally binding agreement between the buyer and the seller. And after reaching a consensus on the terms and conditions of your work relationship. Uh, so key of emphasis is that first, of course, there must be some forms of negotiations. I think we have had conversations around negotiation. Then once we agree on the way forward, now we can be able to uh, enter into a legally binding contract. So documentations are going to be involved, signatures of both parties are going to be involved. So it is uh, a very con uh, critical part of uh, supply chain and procurement activities. And we are saying the importance of now uh, contracting is that um, it is going to assist uh, business transactions between the supplier and the organization, at least to be in form of a legally binding kind of an, an arrangement. So when we talk about legally binding, then we, are, we mean that the law is involved uh, in this kind of conversation. Um, a contract, we are saying, is a legally binding document, a written uh, agreement that is going to be allocating uh, various obligations, uh, risks that may arise within the contractual process and, and rewards between parties that are involved. And uh, it is important to understand that uh, these contracts will uh, clarify various responsibilities and focus on key deliverables uh, of any project. Now, a contract involves a number of things. <laughs> number one, uh, offer. So the first element we are indicating here is the willingness to enter into a contract and either parties for example the organization could be the one tabling an offer maybe for example to supply item x or to supply uh, computer related uh, parts and then after that we need to have the acceptance so the person who has been requested maybe to provide information in regards to particular supply, then they can be able to um, write also confirming that they have agreed to play a critical role in the supply of those goods. So that's a critical part of every contract. There must be the one who is making an offer and there must be that person who is accepting to uh, honor the offer. 
And then also we have what we call consideration, where, where we mean uh, the exchange of value between parties, essential for a contract. So what would we be exchanging in terms of value? I will be bringing my goods as a supplier, and you in return, you are going to be paying for, for these goods. And then the other one is uh, intention to create legal relations where we have mutual agreements to be bound by the terms of the contract uh, and how they are going to be enforced. Uh, other elements of a contract include uh, capacity. Uh, that means the legal ability of all the parties to be able to enter into contract. So we have to ascertain everybody is able especially the supplier. That's why when we are doing negotiation, part of the things we consider are their financial capabilities. Like I explained in a, in a previous uh, discussion, uh, it is very, very important for the supplier to have the financial muscle to be able to uh, run and support the contract as they await their payment after delivery. And another element is what we refer to as legality. The object and purpose of the contract must be lawful and not against uh, public policy. So that simply means whatever engagement that we are in between the organization and the supplier, we need to have we need to have those engagements respecting the law. What does that uh, simply mean? Uh, it simply means that any goods, uh, for example, the supplier is, is supplying, they must be goods that are legal. And that's a very crucial uh, thing for you to be able to note. Now, we have uh, quite a number of contracts in public procurement. For example, we have what we call lump sum contracts. And they are saying these kind of contracts are suitable for well-defined uh, procurement with fixed prices or price adjustments. Uh, and examples of those lump sum contracts include construction projects, they include uh, maintenance contracts, e.g. road maintenance, and uh, we also have what we call time-based contracts. Uh, when we are talking about time-based contracts, we they are used with uns uncertain scopes. Yeah? Uh, with payment that is going to be based on an agreed hourly rate, uh, a daily rate, or a weekly rate, and so on and so forth. And then we also have what we call uh, ad measurement contracts. Um, we are saying these kind of contracts in procurement are ideal uh, with the changing quantities or specifications and these are going to be involving uh, unit rates or bills of quantities. Uh, other examples that we can talk about ad measurement contracts are also what we call digital advertisements uh, measurement contract. So in this kind of contracts, the companies are ideally going to uh, engage people that do digital advertising uh, to enter into, into contracts. Uh, other types are what we call framework contracts, and we are saying these kind of contracts establish terms for subsequent contracts that are geared towards offering flexibility and, and cost savings. Other names that we give for frameworks contracts, we could also call them umbrella agreements, we could call them master agreements. And we are saying the key purpose is uh, in this kind of contracts, or what is the key thing that is happening? It establishes terms and conditions for future uh, transactions. Uh, examples of what we can call framework contracts are uh, government contracts that establish agreements with suppliers for provision of goods and services over a set period of time. Um, we have what is called percentage-based contracts. So these kind of contracts relate to fees directly to the estimated or actual cost of the, of the contract. And um, 
Finally, we have what we call cost reimbursable kind of contracts. So these kind of contracts are used for emergency or high risk works, eh? uh, reimbursing actual costs uh, plus an agreed uh, fee amount. Now, types of uh, contracts also uh, continuation, we have what we call target price contracts. Uh, when we talk about this kind of contracts, they set a target price for incentives or for cost savings below the target. Other names that we could call uh, the target price contracts are uh, what we call the incentive-based kind of contracts. Uh, they are also called, uh, they involve getting asset price for a project or, or service. Uh, examples would be, for example, when we talk about target price contracts, IT projects, for example, e.g. software development or implementation uh, projects. Others are uh, what we call uh, retainer contracts. So they retain a provider for services over a prescribed period of time without this defining uh, specific service levels. Eh? So here, um, most organizations that use this kind of contractual or contracts, they are going to be working with a specific uh, service provider but they usually do not specify the levels of service. So that means the levels of service and other nitty gritties of the contract are going to be discussed at that particular point where now there is some work or goods to supply. We have what we call the contracting process. Um, so the first step in the contracting process, it involves initiation and need identification. Yeah? And that involves initiating a party. Uh, in this case, we identify the needs for goods or services and initiate the process. So we need to begin by identifying that uh, for sure, for sure, we need item X or we need, we need uh, good good or item number B. Yeah, so that is very, very critical. Even at an individual level, when we are purchasing any goods, then we are beginning by looking at, uh, do you need the item? And then also as we are doing that uh, responsibilities, we also need to define the scope. Uh, to what extent do we need the goods? What are the objectives of uh, that kind of engagement? Uh, budget and then after that we do what we call solicitation and vendor selection yeah? so we initiate a process now of uh, coming up with a request for proposal or an in invitation to bid uh, that is going to outline requirements and uh, selection criteria. then we have uh, potential vendors so the potential vendors are going to respond to the request for proposal or the invitation to bid uh, with proposals that are going to detail their qualifications, solutions, costs, etc. And uh, the responsibilities now, the initiating parties are going to evaluate those proposals based on predefined criteria, negotiations with potential vendors. Yeah? And um, vendors also are going to clearly communicate uh, capabilities, respond to inquiries, and negotiate uh, various terms. Uh, we have the negotiation and contract uh, drafting. So we initiate party and select, selected vendor. We initiate conversations now. And in these conversations, we are going to discuss and negotiate different terms and conditions of the, of the agreement. Uh, the legal counsel, which we are saying is optional, uh, we may need to bring somebody who is, who is conversant with law to advise us on uh, what we need to do. Um, the initiating party is going to define their expectations, negotiate favorable terms, and also ensure even as they are negotiating, 
uh, ensuring legal com compliance. And the vendor is, of course, going to negotiate a fair compensation, uh, clarify obligations, and protect in intellectual property. Uh, then from there, we have the contract renew review and approval. So initiating party and the selected vendor are going to be reviewing the final draft. They raise any questions or concerns. Uh, the legal counsel uh, optional, they are going to provide a final review and, and approval for legal standpoints. Uh, the responsibilities include uh, both parties thoroughly are going to review and understand all terms eh, and seek clarification if needed. Uh, so the initiating party is going to ensure alignment with uh, internal policies and budgets and also they also ensure legal compliance and clarify any ambiguities. Number five, then we do contract execution and performance. When we do contract execution and performance, then both parties are going to sign a final agreement and they formally acknowledge terms and conditions uh, and obligations. The responsibilities include initiating party, providing uh, necessary resources, uh, monitor performance and communicate effectively. And the vendor, of course, is now going to deliver goods and services according to agreed time frame and, and quality uh, standards. Number six, we have uh, contract management and monitoring. So both parties are going to monitor progress, address any issues, communicate any forms of deviations or change uh, on challenges. And the responsibilities include uh, initiating party where we track uh, deliverables, manage payments, and ensure compliance with terms. Eh? And also on the side of the vendor, we provide uh, regular updates. Uh, address any concerns promptly and maintain uh, any forms of uh, communication. Uh, contracting process, finally, or last but not least, then we have the contract closure and evaluation. Uh, we are saying both parties, uh, what do they do upon completion, finalizing deliverables, settling uh, payments and review contract performance? Uh, responsibilities. So, initiating parties are going to finalize payments, document lessons learned, and consider future collaborations. The vendor is going to ensure final deliverables are complete. And they are going to gather feedback for improvement. Uh, so, Introduction to contract management, it involves ensuring that contractual obligations are met and they are achieved. And uh, why is contract management important? Uh, that's a critical question for us to be able to ask ourselves. And we are saying it establishes a good working relationship eh, between the procuring and the disposing ed entity or the PDE. Contract implementation, uh, we are saying this one is now going to involve day-to-day -day management, uh, performance evaluation, monitoring, and, and control. Uh, why is it important? Uh, risks of poor management, uh, delayed decision, time cost overruns, damage relationships, some standard works, misunderstanding of obligations and missed opportunities. Huh? So those are the risks that we are going to encounter when we do not manage our contracts appropriately. Issues of delay, issues of time and cost overruns. So you will find yourself, uh, the time has elapsed. Probably we could be running a construction project that has a specific time, uh, duration that you need to have executed and you find yourself you are unable to do it because there is an aspect of contract management that you did not get right. And the other one is impact, highlights the repercussions of ineffective contract management on project success and stakeholder uh, satisfaction. Now, when you are doing 
contract management we have main tasks that we need to uh, discuss number one tasks include obtaining commitments from subcontractors uh, establishing administrative administration plans conducting pre-performance conferences uh, monitoring progress managing changes and, and disputes ensuring timely delivery and uh, and payment huh? Uh, this is important because it illustrates the diverse range of responsibilities that are involved in effectively managing contracts. Now, we have critical personnel that we refer to as the contract managers. Eh? So, what is the role of these uh, contract managers? Number one, they are very critical in terms of doing what we call contract analysis. Uh, they are also uh, critical in terms of doing what we call implementation planning. They are critical in terms of uh, compliance evaluation and internal support. Uh, they are also important when it comes to subcontractor commitments. Uh, sometimes the work is uh, a lot and you need to do subcontract or you need to subcontract some individuals. Mm -hmm. So dispute resolution, uh, documentation, and also termination. And the reason why all this is important is going, it emphasizes on the pivotal role of the contract managers in ensuring uh, contract success and uh, organizational interest. What is the obligation of both parties? Number one, uh, contract obligations, delivering agreed goods, stroke services, and ensuring conformity. Uh, and they ensure also every party is acting in good faith. And the PDE obligations is uh, that these they, they are meant to be able to meet payment obligations, uh, complying with the contracts in terms of conditions. Then we are going to discuss and look up at uh, the causes of contract failure. Once in a while, contracts are going to fail. Either parties are, are going to be unable to meet their contractual obligations. So uh, we have misinterpretation of contracts. So the parties concerned may not uh, be able to interpret right the contract. And therefore, they end up uh, not performing as per the contract specifications. That could be, bring a lot of problems. And then we also have resource inadequacy. Uh, so lack of resources, personnel conflicts. That includes uh, conflicts among the, the, the trading parties. Uh, the other one is unclear authorities. Uh, other causes of contract failure, lack of performance measurement. We, we do not have the ability to really uh, measure what the supplier is doing or we ideally do not do it so how can we be able to give feedback whether the supplier has been of benefit to us or not or whether we need to change them or not and the other one is a uh, risk identification failure so along the relationship between uh, the, the suppliers and the organization there could be some risks involved. And if we do not uh, take part in identifying uh, these risks in advance, then some of them are going, to, are going to affect us. Uh, the other one is guidelines for improving contract management. We have, we need to avoid uh, forms of ambiguity. Uh, we need to identify risks early. So any forms of risks, could it be political risks, economic risks, environmental risks, legal risks. We need to evaluate them early and be able to see how we can mitigate those risks. 
that they do not affect our supply activities eh? and also establish the man management teams these teams are going to be overseeing uh, how the contracts are being uh, done we could also seek legal counsel remember there's a place we were saying it is optional but for us to ensure that we are complying with the law then we need uh, the legal counsel to be in place and also maintaining uh, open communication between the organization and the suppliers other challenges in contract uh, management include our challenges in contract uh, management include uh, legal determinations uh, cultural conflicts uh, changed circumstances so along the way we could have uh, issues that need to be changed so if you are not flexible as a supplier then that could uh, affect how uh, the contract runs and then also ownership changes uh, currency fluctuations like now uh, different countries are having issues with the currency and then also issues to do with uh, language barriers uh, as making it in unable for the participating teams in the contract or the procurement process inability to uh, communicate with each other and finally is challenges in terms of skill gaps so we may not have people that have knowledge around procurement and that could have act as a deterrent to the success of our of our work and then also business culture disparities so that is going to bring us to the end of uh, our lecture i believe you have been able to uh, learn something from the lecture and i invite you to also keep reviewing it and uh, do research on areas that you feel uh, will require clarification. Thank you very much.